Good morning, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for your patience. We've had a lot of changes this morning, so we're just rolling with the punches, but we're really glad that you're here. If you wouldn't mind either coming off of mute or if you're comfortable with uh, turning off your camera, we just kind of want to take note that everyone's here and just want to make sure that you can hear us um, and see everything. So if you wouldn't mind coming off mute or somehow letting us know, um, either verbally or uh, showing your camera, could you let us know that you are here and with us? I'm unable to hear anyone or see anyone yet. Just want to make sure. Oh, there we go. I see one. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. We'll start with ourselves. Good morning. All right, so we will go ahead and first introduce ourselves, but welcome to Lessons Learned, a family literacy program and full service community school partnership discussion. We are going to get started with a few introductions. We'll first start with ourselves. Um, and then if you could please share your name and your location role, um, what your program is or who you're representing um, and your program size. I'll start by sharing that my name is Hannah Van Horn. I am a training specialist with the National Center for Families Learning. I'm based out of Omaha. I am specifically working with many of our family literacy programs across the state in supporting their implementation. And I'll pass it off to my colleague, Lisa. And my name is Lisa Kreger. I am also a training specialist with the National Center for Families Learning. And as Hannah said, we support family literacy programming across the state at various school districts. Um, prior to taking this role with NCFL, I was a family literacy coordinator with Lincoln Public Schools for 13 years in two of their elementary schools. And so a lot of our presentation today is based off of um, my experience as a family literacy coordinator. We have, um, if you would feel free to introduce yourself, I think we're gonna start with Anna. I'm Anna Pitt. Um, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. I work for Completely Kids. I am the site director at Gomez Heritage Elementary School. Um, I have approximately 210 kids in my program. Wonderful. Thank you. And Frank? Hi, my name is Frank Schmerla, and I work with Westside Community Schools and we have a program over two sites, expanding to three this year. Wonderful. Uh, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie Shear. I work at Wood River Rural Schools in the elementary, and um, I am the program director here for the after school program. And then I'm the high ability learning teacher and the musical director as well. And we have about 70 to 75 kids in our program. Wonderful. I'm going to bring the microphone to some folks who are here in the room with us. Oh, sheesh, I have to go? OK. To go. Hello. Uh, I'm Keely Waters. I am with Lincoln Parks and Rec through Calvert Elementary School in Lincoln. Um, I am their school community coordinator, so I'm in charge of all of the after school programs and clubs. Um, currently, with our core group of kids, we have about 80. Um, but clubs probably adds another you know, 20 to 30, kind of just depending. Good morning slash afternoon. <laughs> My name is Glenn White. I'm with the uh, Boys and Girls Club. I am at Mountain View and I'm the site director over there. Michaela Vasquez. I am the coordinator slash business manager at the elementary in Schuyler. Um, we have around 100 and 110 kids that are enrolled in our after school program, so. My name is Andrea Palmer. I am the coordinator, site coordinator at Forest Station Elementary Completely Kids program. Um, and we have around 53 students registered for our program this year. Hi, I'm Sandra Frerichs. I'm with Nebraska 4-H. And for those of you online, I am your virtual room host. I will be joining you online in just a moment. 
All right, and because we had some people coming in a little later, um, Hannah and I will reintroduce ourselves. Um, my name is Lisa Krager. I am a family literacy, no, I'm a training specialist. Sorry, our titles changed <laughs> like six months ago and I can't keep that straight. With the National Center for Families Learning, we have the Nebraska Statewide Family Engagement Center grant and the focus of our last five years as an SFEC has been dissemination of family literacy programs across the state, um, and I coach those. But prior to coming to NCFL, I was a family literacy specialist for Lincoln Public Schools for 13 years in two different elementary schools, both with community learning centers. And so a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today is based on that experience. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah Van Horn, also a training specialist alongside Lisa. Here in Nebraska, I also work for the National Center for Families Learning and the Nebraska Statewide Family Engagement Center. So similar to Lisa, we work very closely and I also support many of our family literacy programs that are operating um, out of the state. And I'm based in Omaha, specifically working with Omaha Public Schools um, here, which is great, but I also do get to travel across the state as well. So we will just get um, right into that. Thank you for sharing that with us. A little bit of our um, agenda today is going to be, first of all, um, we did our introduction and share out. We're then going to get into a little bit of our work and talk about the Nebraska SFEC and what family literacy is. And then Lisa will share a partnership uh, discussion with you all. And then we'll go into an activity um, and share out based off of that discussion. I don't know if I can. I can. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it sounds interesting, though. It sounds interesting, right? I know. <laughs> All right. So our first order of business, you've kind of heard us briefly touch on family literacy and what we do. We want to talk about what that model looks like. Um, we'll first kind of go back and talk about the federal uh, definition of family literacy. So the term family, well, has anyone heard of family literacy before or familiar with that? I see one, maybe, okay, so a couple head nods, great. So the term family literacy services refers to services that are of sufficient intensity in terms of the number of hours that participates participate in and sufficient duration to make sustainable changes in a family that integrate all of the following activities. This is really based um, and grounded in interactive literacy activities between parents and their children. So this is multi-generational, but it also might be other parenting adults, aunts, uncles, grandparents that participate in the program. So we refer to parents, but we also might say parenting adults since that encompasses a lot of different folks. It also includes training for parents regarding how to be the primary teacher for their children and how they can be full partners in the education of their children. And then parent literacy training that can really lead to economic self-sufficiency. That's grounded in adult education, which we'll be talking about shortly in the family literacy model. And then age-appropriate education that prepare children in school and life experiences. So we're going to be talking about the family literacy model here. There are four components of family literacy. The first one is adult education. And um, families that are participating in the program typically engage in adult education for three or more hours a week. There are several programs that we work with that do more than that on the upwards of six to even nine, eight hours a week in adult education. And that can look like a lot of different things. Um, that can be ESL. Um, that, it, that goes for many of the families within our program that are wanting to learn English as a second language. We do that through partnerships with community colleges um, for ESL um, or even GED. That can also go beyond ESL and GED and could be workforce, career skills, career readiness, anything like that um, within adult education. We then have parent time in which parents are engaging in that into one to two hours per week. That is um, one of my favorite components. That is when the parents are coming together as a cohort within their program and can really just be 
parents um, and talk, you know, that's surrounded by topics that they are very interested in. That can be topics about what it's like to be a parent, but it's not just about parenting. That can be community resources that they're interested in, school resources, really getting connected to their school and community, things that they are very interested in. It's very goal driven. What goals do they have as a parent or how they want to engage in their community or in their child's education within the school? So parent time is very much based around that, those goals um, and different topics that interest them. And then parent and child together time, I guess this is another one of my favorites. Um, that's referred to as packed time and parents engage in that for one, maybe more hours a week, maybe one to two. That is when they are coming into their child's classroom every week. They're doing that for one to two hours. They actually get to come into the classroom, spend time with their child, and learn alongside them. So they're not just coming in to observe or volunteer in the classroom, although you know those things are really great so that they can experience that firsthand, but they're really, really working alongside their child. They're listening, they're watching um, you know, the entire class, the teacher, and how their child is interacting with the school material, and they're able to do that with them. We also saw how this could be done after school and at home, especially during the pandemic when they weren't necessarily able to come into school. So this can absolutely take place in a different environment aside from the classroom. It can take place in their home, which we've really been able to see. And then the fourth one really speaks for itself. That's children's education. That is what's already going on inside of the districts that we partner with within the school. So that component is really looped into every single one of these. Of course, it's what they're doing within the curriculum and instruction within their school. But that's, of course, embedded in pa um, parent time, pack time, and even adult education as well. Um, I'll pause there. Are there any questions about the family literacy model and these four components so far. Okay. Oh, yes. Sure, yeah, the um, question was if we and our organization partners with um, other organizations or community members as well, and we definitely do in several different ways. I can pass this off to Lisa as well if there are any other ideas. I think some of the big ones that we partner with for adult education would be community colleges um, and those programs. In terms of after school or you know maybe family events, a lot of the roles um, of our family literacy coordinators, they work within the school. Maybe they're paraprofessionals, family liaisons, um, and those are the ones that kind of you know host some of those things. So family literacy can definitely be a part of that. Are there any particular organizations that you wanted to touch on? We have lots of, of course we partner with school districts. We cannot have parents going into the classroom for pack time without partnering with school districts. So that piece is crucial. Um, and specifically what you're talking about, about family nights, is what we're gonna get to here in just a little bit. So great question, we're gonna get to that. Thanks. Any other questions? Don't see any, perfect. So, we are going to do a parent share, so you can speak with this first at your table, and then we will come back to discuss, but we just wanted to know what family engagement organizations currently operate within your school or within your program specifically. So you can take a moment to think about that, and then please engage with others at your table, and then we'll come back. So we'll just do a few minutes here. For our virtual participants, please feel free to share your answer and your thoughts to this question in the chat. Um, 
Sandra will be helping um, monitor that and engage with you there, so please feel free to share your response there. Thank you. We'll come back in one minute to share out. All right, we're hearing some great conversation. We'll come back to Cheryl. I'll pass the microphone to anyone that would like to, and we'll make sure that our um, virtual participants, you are more than welcome to come off mute. Let us know. Is there anyone over here? Let's start with. Right here, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that way they can, they can hear you. Not so good. Yep, uh, my name's Glenn White. Um, I'm site director at Mount View. And what I was saying, uh, and I'm with Boys and Girls Club, by the way, so what I was saying was a lot of our parents um, don't have GEDs. So one thing we decided to focus on was to partner with um, like Urban League, Hunter Black Men of Montval, and just to kind of help give them training and more direction so that the household is more in order because we're all helping the kids, but if the head of the houses have no direction or you know stability, then it's like, what are we doing? But that's one thing we're doing just to kind of help build that, that foundation for everybody. So I'm with Completely Kids, and we actually have a family program at our main site um, on St. Mar 25th and St. Mary's, and that encompasses adult classes as well as kids' classes. So we have GED classes, we have ESL classes, um, computer literacy is one of them, I think financial literacy is one of them, but we also like try to engage with them in other ways, like, um, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm trying to say, but um, contribute to like them as a whole person. So we do sewing as well and like crafts and a cooking class. Um, and the one thing I will say that they kind of have had a struggle with is trying to get the male demographic in versus like a lot of the women come and moms come. And I think that's maybe something that we all struggle with is trying to like get the dads and like the males to show up in the programs. And even like with parent involvement is usually the mom that you know, does everything. But no, yeah, at our program, that's what we do. We actually started a family program and that is adult classes. And then their kids have childcare the entire time. So there's a staff that sits in the room with the kids and they actually run curriculum with those kids while their parents are taking their classes. So, yeah. 
We've got a couple of ideas that were shared online. Gosh, I can't read with my glasses on. Stephanie says that in our small town, we don't have a lot of opportunities like this for families, so we're working hard at the school to engage with families in our building, but we see this as a need, and we need to do bigger programs. So hopefully you'll get some ideas, Stephanie, that you can take back. And Frank says that our programs are more around academics and tutoring, academic enrichment provided by the schools. Wonderful, thank you. Is there anyone else? All right. I think we are ready to move on, but it might be, yeah, time to talk about what this looks like as a partnership with family literacy. All right, thank you, Hannah. Um, so I'm gonna start with uh, Arnold Elementary at Lincoln Public Schools. Um, 2005, the Arnold CLC started the um, collaborating agency for Arnold CLC is Lincoln Housing Authority. And that's important to know because of the way that Lincoln Housing Authority views community is slightly different than maybe um, Cedars. Okay. Oh, went too far. So in 2005, Arnold CLC started, and then in 2007 to 2008, um, huge influx of new immigrant and refugee families into the area. Um, the Arnold attendance area, for now, contains the largest subsidized housing area associated with any one elementary school within the city of Lincoln. So um, that was a great impact upon the school. And then in 2009, family literacy programming was started there. Um, at the time that it started, that's when I was hired, uh, we had a class of 14 families speaking Arabic, Kurdish, Nuer, Russian, and Spanish in one classroom. So um, high needs. Our partners for the family literacy program were, as listed here, I'll give you a moment to look at that. And I'll ask you, is there anything on this list that really jumps out to you that makes you say, huh, how did that come about or how did that work or anything that is surprising on this list? Okay, the question was, I'm intrigued by the Arbor Res Care Center director. Um, <clears throat> Arbor Res Care is now called Equus Workforce Solutions. They have had a number of change iterations over the last 15 years. Um, but they are the contract agency for the state of Nebraska for Employment First. And so a big part of what we were doing with having them join and be one of our collaborating partners was to ensure that families who were coming to our programming were able to count that education time as their match for receiving food stamps or any other subsidized um, services through the state. Okay. And it also allowed us to do some mutual collaboration with them. Um, they found out that they had been training people for food handlers level one and couldn't understand why they weren't being hired by Lincoln Public Schools. And we were able to share with them that LPS requires food, handle, food handlers level two. And so some of those things that we were just not meeting together, we were missing the mark on how to help families become employed. Uh, any other questions or any other ahas or 
Hmm, I wonder about that. Absolutely. So the question was, do I have any ideas for smaller communities? Um, I would look for who's operating in your county, because that's going to be very different. A small community like Wood River, as I know we have someone from there on our call, is not necessarily going to have all of these folks readily at their disposal. But you have major employers. Talk to those employers. Find out how you can support their workforce. Or more specifically, in a lot of our communities, their lack of workforce. And <clears throat> one partner that we did not have at the time that this started, but we eventually had um, when I moved to another school, is your local bank. Because statistically, less than 30% of immigrant and refugee families have a bank account. And so part of that is due to not understanding the banking system. So hello, parent time. <laughs> and part of that is due to not having someone in the bank that speaks their language that they can go in and get the information that they need. Okay, so Think about those employers, those folks. It sounds rather mercenary, but who in your community would like access to parents they're not currently reaching? And then get them to the table. Right, good questions. Any comments from, okay. All right, and it seems like a sizable group, and it really was, but it was also an important group to have together when we were problem solving. Okay. <clears throat> so what did CLC staff do? Well, they came and presented to the participants about the enrichment clubs and our snack meetings. Okay. Our families weren't participating in enrichment clubs. They did not understand the enrollment forms. Um, it would ask them to prioritize one, two, three, <laughs> which clubs they most wanted. Parents were putting X's on six and seven clubs that they thought their kids might want to do. They would have kindergartners and be marking clubs that were meant for fourth and fifth grade. They just were not understanding the forms. So in order to get their participation up, that was one thing that we did. Um, our CLC staff came in and shared community resource information. Operation Santa, and those things that were happening in the community that our families would have had no context to understand. They helped conduct the community needs assessment with the class for our school improvement, because this was a population that wasn't showing up when you send home a flyer. It says, come talk to us about school improvement. They're like, what do you mean? You have a school? My kids go? What more do you want? Okay. And they would stop by the class periodically, share information, get feedback, say hello, build that relationship. So as family literacy staff, I ensured that any events and snack meetings were on our program calendar. Okay. In addition to that, I made sure I was at those events. That's that last one, supported the family nights, because they had a relationship with me. If I said, I'm going to be there, I'll be at the registration desk, I'll be in that front hallway when you come in. If I was there, our families would come, because they felt like there was somebody who would understand them, a friendly face. Okay? I assisted with those club registrations, really helped explain them, and I encouraged representation to the snack. We did not assign a parent, but a class meeting before our snack meetings, we had a parent volunteer to be the voice of the class at those snack meetings and then come back to the class and share with us what they learned. Part of that representation and support meant we had to have a translator for them at those meetings. 
but bringing their voice to the table really enriched the information, not only that we were gleaning from them, but that our community was understanding from our parents. Okay. I'm gonna go back here for just a second. Do we have any questions so far? We'll take a moment here. Um, when I left Arnold Elementary in Lincoln and went to Campbell Elementary, they didn't have a CLC the first year I was there. So when their CLC staff came on, it was an opportunity to start building that relationship from the ground up. I was an advisor to her in her new role. And we had similar outcomes. Um, <clears throat> a community needs assessment that took place for um, some restructuring around land that was gifted to the city from the railroad, what was going to go there? And before the class weighed in and had an opportunity to put that, it was all retail. But one of the things our class noted was that in North Lincoln, they are 15 to 20 minutes from any emergency room in the city. And our community report said that life expectancy in that corner of Lincoln was six years lower than anywhere else in the city. And one of the things the parents noted was, we need an emergency room. We need emergency critical life emergency services on the north side of town. And it was funny because when our person, our CLC person took that back to the committee, they were all like, I never thought of that. So that perspective that was shared. So when it worked, <clears throat> because sometimes it didn't, after I left, the person who took over as the family literacy coordinator at Arnold, that relationship didn't quite gel. When the first CLC site supervisor left at Campbell, that relationship didn't quite gel. So when it worked, we had a shared vision Mutual program respect, flexibility, willingness to co-plan, having that commitment to honoring family voice, and bringing elementary staff into the process. Making those connections, because the goal of family literacy is not to have the students make a connection with me as a teacher, it's to have them make a commitment with the school and with the district that they're gonna partner with for the remainder of their child's education. Uh, when it didn't work, we had the wrong staff for the role. Um, we didn't have, we had that differing vision of program outcomes and mutual benefits. Um, we had competing responsibilities and agendas. A lack of flex flexibility, or in some cases, just no respect for each other's programs. So our takeaway, Right people whose focus is on relationship building and creating an informed community. Okay. Any questions? I know we've given other opportunities along the way. Um, did you happen to send that to? That link to Sandra. Awesome. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay. So we are going to now move into a think sheet. We're going to hand this around. For those of you who are joining us virtually, um, we will drop it into the chat and you are welcome to make a copy and um, type in that as you go. And we will hand that out.
And one of the things that I should have asked was, does your community have family literacy? Yes. Yeah. Ours was during the day as, as well. And so um, that just meant I stayed. <laughs> That's what that meant. <laughs> And our CLC staff were awesome about flexing their time and coming in. Um, those from Omaha, there is family literacy programming at Minilusa, Fontanelle, and Belvedere, if you work with those communities. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, don't forget to think about the PTA, PTO, um, booster clubs, any of those organizations that parents are involved in that are operating in your schools. I can see some of you are still writing, but <clears throat> we're down to about 10 minutes, and I really want to have us share out this um, collectively. We uh, do better than on our own. So is there anyone who would like to share um, 
anything, either collaboration partners or what you need. Let's start with collaboration partners. Does anyone want to share their potential collaboration partners? Okay, hello. Um, so at Calvert Elementary, we are pretty blessed with Union Bank and Trust is fairly close to our school. Um, and they do a lot of partnership with us throughout the year where it's like they bring, you know, um, like they'll do a toy drive or something around Christmas and they kind of regularly do things with us, just not in that sense of family literacy. So um, I could see them being a really good partnership for that. Um, otherwise, like I think we're also fairly blessed at that school. The admin team is really really excited about CLC so I've never really had much pushback from like the principal I work with or not really much of the staff either like they all are really in for it so um, I would say that's a huge resource too for us but um, EverFi is one that I randomly put down I just happen to know somebody in that program um, they are a remote company so I could see that working for a lot of different companies but um, they are similar to like they're really focused on financial literacy more than anything, but um, they're a free program. So I've been looking into using that resource. Um, I believe they're more geared towards children, but I think they're trying to expand into kind of adult education as well. So that was another one I had done. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? Potential collaboration partners. <laughs> Other than the ones that you mentioned about uh, like at Menelusa and Fonnell, because those are right down the street from us. Like if I can branch us all together, I think that'd be awesome. Um, outside of that, in the business realm, we do a lot with Hy-Vee, um, Walmart, and some um, laundromats in our neighborhood. So if I could do something with that, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. And Hannah is your hookup here for being able to connect with the coordinators for family literacy at those two schools. Anyone else? Okay, that's all right. Hopefully you've, you've had some good thoughts. And one I would add, <clears throat> the family literacy program at Everett Elementary in Lincoln, has a really cool relationship with the local Kiwanis. And they come in and they provide speakers and um, one of the opportunities that they provide that I think is amazing is they provide an opportunity for the families to all go out to dinner. Because a lot of our families um, don't have the discretionary income to go to a restaurant where you go in and you sit down and you order. And so they do lessons for ELL around how to read a menu, how to order, um, what are expected table manners, those kinds of things. And then Kiwanis provides the funds for the class and all of their children to go out for dinner. I just want to advocate for your local county extension office as a potential partner, not just the 4-H program that I'm part of, but we have an early childhood program that has great resources for families around um, being a family, um, behavior issues, some of those things. And there's our health and nutrition educators that would come out and do some educational programs with your family. So reach out to your local county office and find out what how they'd like to partner. Absolutely, and another plug for them is their RentWise program that is available in both English and Spanish that helps families understand how to um, deal with issues with landlords and um, getting developing credit while you're renting. Okay, the teacher guide is free. You have to order the student workbooks, but they're not horribly expensive. Okay, um, what do we bring to a partnership and what do we need? Do we have anybody who would like to share out about that? Looks like you're up. Uh, <laughs> we'll start here and then we'll go. Um, I just said, uh, particularly what we bring, uh, we bring the families, uh, we bring diversity, uh, we bring multiple opportunities and finances. Awesome. 
A few things I wrote down was that um, we have a mental health, like we, we have mental health that we offer to our parents and our kids. So that was a big like step for us as an organization is to offer that. Um, we also have staffing, like in order to facilitate these events, in order to keep them going and to organize them and stuff like that, we can leverage our staff. Um, and then I said that we have Spanish speakers. So our um, demographic is very heavily Spanish based. And um, we have a lot of Spanish speaking staff available. Um, and then I would say that we also have funding for like food and materials to facilitate these things and partnerships and stuff like that. And that, that is all I would say, but yeah. Um, don't forget facilities. Many of your programs have facilities, which is huge because there's lots of places that have families to serve or they have something they want to present. They have no place to do it. So you bring facilities. Um, anybody want to share about what you need? That list could be pretty long for most of us, right? <laughs> One thing that I thought about was that the responsibility of facilitating like this long term as a coordinator, I run many, wear many different hats already, we run a kids based program. So like trying to make sure that a program can run or like this can run without me being like the main head or maybe trying to get it to where it can run without me. Or um, I would say just trying to like leverage that to where my level of responsibility in it and try to partner with other people so that I guess I would say it's not as much pressure on the individual to like run and facilitate all of that. So I think that would be like a big, a big barrier is like, if we were to like do this, I wouldn't want it to like all of a sudden stop because you just can't, you don't have the um, capacity anymore. So yeah. Absolutely. Yep, I'm coming. Um, one of the things I will say is that um, family literacy program coordinators really frequently act in schools as family engagement specialists. But there are a number of different titles for that, depending on your school, family outreach, family engagement, family support. Connect with that person because they have the parents in their pocket. So I'm the site director at McPhee Elementary, and I know one of the things that we we have a family uh, lit specialist um, there that I coordinate family engagement events with. And one thing that she's mentioned is uh, lack of interpreters right now. Uh, so I know that's something that is um, still sort of a, a gap. Thank you, and an absolute shameless plug for a partner, um, Mariana Deschel from Nebraska Children and Families Foundation this afternoon at I think the two o'clock-ish breakout, will be doing something on interpretation using your high school seniors. So thinking about how can we utilize those folks. Any other, any thoughts from our virtual audience? Um, and then, <clears throat> Um, what challenges, this will, well, we've only got a couple of minutes here, but does anybody have an overwhelming challenge or barrier that you anticipate to um, working with those parent leadership or parent organizations within your districts or your program areas? Transportation, absolutely. That is huge big barrier for our families. Access to Wi-Fi, particularly if you're spreading the news electronically. Um, how many of your schools and programs use only an electronic newsletter format? They no longer send home papers. Yeah, yeah that's a problem for folks who they're using their phones and they're only able to access that when they're someplace with free public Wi-Fi, always a barrier. Low literacy, low literacy. Um, <clears throat> there's a wonderful website called Rewordify. If you put in the information from your flyer, you can choose to lower the literacy level to 
rewordify, rewordify.com, and you can put in information that is going home to families and change the literacy level so that it is easier to read. So that won't clearly won't cover every eventuality, but if you've got a second grader who's interpreting what's on that paper for parents, let's not have it at a fourth grade reading level. <laughs> that <laughs> yep yeah and sometimes I hear school staff say well I don't want to insult parents by sending it no I'm sorry I had three children I did not have time to sit down and read two paragraphs to tell me they're going to the zoo in two weeks I just want bullet points give me the important information and let me get on because I'm not sure how I'm putting supper on the table right now <laughs> I don't have time to read paragraphs. So. Right. So schedules. Parents are busy, work, family, all of the above. How do we find a time? Um, and to me, you know, if I can piggyback off of something they're already going to, woohoo! <laughs> Let's do programming for parents while kids are at soccer practice because they're already right there. You know, those kinds of things where we can capture the audience we want to get information from when they're already present. Let's not make them do something extra. All right. Well, that's all we have. We'll hang out here for a little while for further questions if anybody has them. Um, it has been delightful to talk with you all. And um, our information, oh, here's uh, about families learning and how you can follow us on social media. And I think the next slide has our email. So please, um, all of our business cards are on our walk and talk table. So we have none of those with us, but feel free to stop by and pick those up. And we, <laughs> yeah, oh, we do. I forgot about that. So let me grab those. We'll share those with you here. And for those of you who are joining us virtually, thank you again for giving us your time. We know there were lots of things you could have gone to today, and we're glad you were here.